Hello, everybody. It's Christmas Eve. Are you so excited? You know, tonight is the night that we celebrate the birth of Jesus, who came into this world in a very unexpected way and turned everybody's understanding about God and what was important upside down. I want to share with you a story that's kind of similar. It's about somebody else who learned that everything they thought maybe wasn't the same. Now, I wonder if you can guess who some of the characters in this story might be. Could it be Tyrannosaurus Rex? No. Could it be Mickey Mouse? Hi, your pal. No. Could it be Peter Rabbit? No, wrong season, Pastor Rachel. No. It is the Grinch. Isn't he lovable and cuddly? But he wasn't always. Let's hear the story about how he became a little bit more lovable and cuddly and about how a whole town learned a little bit more about the meaning of Christmas themselves. But before we get started, I have two things I need to do. I gotta get my hat on and then I need these. Here we go. How the Grinch stole Christmas. Oh, and by the way, if I look like I'm looking off to the side in a weird way, it's because that's where the book is for me. And it's going to look a little weird for you, but that's just how the computer goes. Enjoy. This is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Every who down in Whoville loved Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't on just right. Put your head on right. It could be, perhaps, his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who's. Staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown. The warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas practically here. And he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to keep Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew all the who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise. Oh, the noise, 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 noise! That's the one thing he hated. The noise, 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 noise. Then the Who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. 
They would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every who done in Whoville, the tall and the small would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand and the who's would start singing. They'd sing and they'd sing and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've put up with it now. I must stop Christmas from coming. But how? got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat and he quick made a Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked, oh, what a great Grinchy trick. <laughs> With this coat and this hat, I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around. But since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max. Then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. See that? Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, get up. And the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All the windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air all the who's were dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one, the old Grinchy Claws hissed. And he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two. Then he stuck out his head from the fireplace flue where the little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant. Around the whole room and he took every present. Pop guns, bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the ice box. He took the who's feast. He took the who pudding, he took the roast beast. He cleaned out that ice box as quick as a flash. Why the Grinch even took their last can of who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. 
And now, said the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who'd got out of bed for a cold cup of water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking the Christmas tree? Why? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head and he got her a drink and sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went back to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for their fire. And he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for other whose mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the who's still abed, all the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled. Packed it up with their presents, their ribbons, their wrappings, the tags and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. 3,000 feet up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo-poo with the hoos, he was grinchishly humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up, I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two, then the hoos down in Whoville will all cry, boo-hoo. <laughs> That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear, and he did hear a sound hissing over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry. Very. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook when he saw a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. 
he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't thought of before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, is a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say, that Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. And he brought back the toys and he brought back the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch carved the roast beast. The end. I hope you like that story. Have you heard it before? Do you think hearts can grow? Do you think we can learn more about Christmas as we go along and maybe even in this strange year? I'd love to know what you think. You can share in the chat and the comments. I'm so glad that you came and listened to my story. And these guys are really glad that you came and listened to their story because, you know, they like the attention. Merry Christmas. Go to sleep tonight if you can. Don't get up like Cindy Lou Who. But if you do, I hope someone gives you a glass of water and tucks you into bed and doesn't take any trees or presents. I don't think that'll happen. Merry Christmas.